Good morning, everybody. Keith Hill here, foodtruckhelp.com, the I Love Bacon Truck, I Love Bacon Truck.com. Uh, as always, sitting here having my coffee in the morning, and I uh, just wanted to uh, record a couple things that may help somebody out there that's that's struggling or somebody that wants to get started. And uh, we've had a lot of growth over the last six years just in knowledge and operational procedure. And I'm hoping that I can pass some of that knowledge on to somebody just getting started or somebody struggling in their existing business and help out. Um, I'm still pushing our Instagram. Uh, we are growing a bit, but if you uh, if you get something out of this podcast and this podcast helps you, uh, please go follow the I Love Bacon Truck on Instagram. We're still trying to uh, get that going so we can uh, do the swipe up links and the links in our pictures to sell products off of our website. Let me know if you follow us. If you're from the podcast, uh, shoot me a DM. I will follow you back uh, because I want you to be able to sell your products as well and uh, bring in another revenue stream. So that's what we're really working on in, in 2020 is adding that uh, revenue stream for the products that we make and uh, just bump up our sales a little bit. So I uh, hope you will do the same. I hope you have some things that you can, uh, you know, put in jars or uh, things you can make and sell as well and open up a little bit more money for yourself. So today I want to talk about something that is very important to me and we launched it uh, January 1, 2019. It was something that I uh, had had stumbled across in a TED talk from Michael McCallowicz. I believe that is the way you pronounce his name. Um, he has a system called the Profit First System. Now, I haven't bought anything of his. I haven't, uh, you know, he seems like type of a uh, like a guru type, a self help type guy who's who's wants you to buy books and courses and seminars or webinars or, you know, whatever. And that's fine. Like he has, I'm going to tell you, he has a great system. We have we have implemented a very basic version of it. Uh, I will give you the quick rundown. He was a business owner. He owned, uh, you know, one business. I think his first business. Uh, kind of went under, went bankrupt. His second business, he was able to uh, have a meager, successful exit and sell that. And then his third business, he launched what he refers to as the Profit First System. Uh, the basics of this system are is whatever you look at your budget. So with with the food business, you look at if you sell a ten dollar sandwich, you have uh, you know twenty five percent food costs. So there's two fifty. Uh, let's call it 30% labor costs. There's three bucks and on down the line, rent utilities, uh, every bit of a, you know, every percentage, uh, goes to something. What you need to do is figure out what your percentages are in your budget. And then you need to be able to carve out about 15% for yourself. Uh, we're trying very hard to figure out how to squeeze out 20% without raising cost, uh, you know, on our menu, but I think that's everybody's goal is to figure out a, a 20% profit. Uh, I don't know that we're going to go this route, but we do have venture capitalists that are interested in helping us grow the brand if we can show 20% profit. Now, whether or not we go that route or not, I would like to see us consistently do 20% profit, which is very strong in the food business. But with all that being said, let's get back to profit first. I will tell you the way we implemented it on a very basic level. Um, like I said, I saw his TED Talk video, just stumbled upon it, uh, got you know got a basic grasp of the way his system worked, and we implemented it January 1, 2019, and I'll tell you the way we did it. So basically what I did was went in and set up two brand new accounts on top of our, you know, each location has an account. And then we set up what I call a corporate account, which is our profit. And then I set up a marketing account. So I figured out what our marketing budget was. We called it 1.5% of sales. And then our profit uh, account should be in the budget should be 15% or our profit in, in the uh, business should be 15%. So what I do, so so we'll use January 2019 as an example. We go through January 2019. On February 1, I look at January sales. I take 15% of whatever those sales were, and I transfer them from each location to the corporate account, our profit account. Okay, so, so Mr. McCallowick's theory is, is what you do is you make sure you pull your profit first and then everybody else gets paid after that. 
And I believe the psychological theory is if you pull that out, you will operate on much tighter margins than if you have a lot of money sitting in the account and you feel like mentally that you have some cushion there or some cushion to, uh, oh, we'll spend a little bit here, we'll spend a little bit there. Uh, we'll pay this bill that's kind of been looming over our head for a bit. We'll pay a little bit more on the credit card than we normally would, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, I also want to say this. If you're not able to pay your uh, credit card that you buy your food and things with off at the end of the month, you're doing something very wrong. So you want to be able to make sure that you can pay that credit card off every month. Uh, and if you can't, something's wrong. But then anytime we buy anything new say we buy a new uh so for instance i've been looking at a new uh robo to uh to do our pickles 1700 hundred dollar robo coop cl50 um if we buy that what's going to happen is of course we'll put it on our credit card because we want to get the rewards from our credit card but then what i will do is i will pull that 1700 whatever that robo coop cost i will pull that out of our profit account and I will put it back into the location account that bought the piece of equipment. <clears throat> All right. So anything new comes out of profit. It doesn't come off of the uh, out of the operating account because if if you buy something new, it's going to throw off. You're going to be in the negative because you're probably going to be operating on very thin margins. You should should have just a little left uh, when you put it into your profit account. So uh, that being said, pull your money first. Everybody else is secondary, your, uh, you know, bill collectors, et cetera, et cetera. And what this does is it allows you to see very quickly, at least on a monthly basis, if you're out of budget anywhere. So what you do is set that budget. <clears throat> and if you're out of budget, if you're having to pull from your profit account to go back into your location operating account, if you're having to put money back into the location your budget is off somewhere. You're spending too much on labor. You're spending too much on food. You're spending too much on utilities or rent or et cetera, et cetera. But it throws a red flag. Then you can go in and start doing a little investigation and see exactly uh, why you're having to pull money out of your profit. For us, 2019, this worked amazingly. I can't see us ever going back to doing it the old way, the old accounting way to where it's just you bring in sales, you pay out expenses, and whatever's left at the end of the month is yours, you know, as profit. What I want to do is ensure that we're making 15%. As the CEO, I have to know that we're making 15% minimum. If we're not, it's not worth being in business. Um, so we did that this year. Worked amazingly. I'll never go back unless something better, another system comes out that's better uh, and makes more sense. Now... You know, we do the same thing with the marketing account. We put that cash back into our business. You want to make sure that you're putting that money back into your business and marketing to discover new customers and bring in new money. So we always make sure that that 1.5% is bringing in either, uh, you know, more regular sales or we're using it to promote a new revenue stream that we have, uh, you know, kind of working or, or uh, simmering in the background. Uh, we also we always want to use that 1.5 percent to bring in another uh, revenue stream, uh, so we can pull more profit out. Of course, <clears throat> so if you can do this, please do it. It's a very simple system. Uh, to recap, look at your sales at the end of the month, the first day of the new month. Look at your sales from the previous month. Pull 15 percent, put it into a separate account, and try not to ever pull out of that account um, to go back into operating. Now, if you need that for your paycheck or, or whatever, um, that's all well and good. You're ensured that you're getting your profit. Here's where I'm going to kind of turn it on its head. Okay, so this this may be, uh, I'm not going to say it's over anybody's head, but it may just be something that somebody's not aware of. So what we did was we took that profit account, the corporate account, and we did a, uh, a money market account. Now, if you're not familiar with a money market account, basically it's a uh, fairly low-yielding interest account, but it's something. So if you look at a couple places, there are a couple places that have, you can get up to 2%. Uh, BBVA Compass has a very easy to get 1.8. And then there's another company uh, that's an online banking company, and the name is slipping my mind right now, but uh, I'll try to remember it and, and mention it in another podcast. Uh that pays 2% APR, 
on anything over $25,000. So if you can get 25 grand in your account, you let it sit, you let that profit work for you, and you're basically compounding your profit, even if it's by 2%. Now, if you're a little more brave uh, and you're familiar with finance, you can take that cash and put into a mutual or index fund. Uh, for those that don't know, mutual funds and index funds are very similar. Uh, the only difference is index funds aren't very aggressively maintained. Uh, mutual funds are, you know, you basically have a, a guy working day to day on buying and selling and adding stocks to a mutual fund. It's it's basically a collection of stocks. Um, like what I would suggest is like a Fidelity. Uh, there's a mutual fund, you, or I'm sorry, an index fund you can look up. It's FNCMX, which is basically uh, a lot of their holdings are big uh, technology companies, Apple, Google, uh, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for instance, I will pull this up. Give me just one second. I should have looked at this before I started the podcast, but uh, for instance, today, the FNCMX Fidelity Fund that uh, is like a big technology fund. Uh, year to day or year to date profit is 36%, 35.95%. So if, say, you put $10,000 in there, I'm going to scroll down. If you put $10,000 in there uh, 10 years ago, today it would be. $44,555. Okay, so that's a way for you to compound that profit once you have it. If you don't need it, if your truck is a situation where you have another job and you have the truck as a side business uh, and you don't really need that cash, I highly suggest at the minimum putting it into a money market account. Uh, now, a lot of accounts require a minimum, you know, a 5000 or 10000 or like I said, the one that pays 2% requires a $25,000 deposit. Um, wait till you've got, you know, $5,000 to move that money over into a marketing account. If not, they will charge you, uh, like with ours, it's a $10 a month fee. So that fee is eating up any interest uh, that you may make, and it's actually costing you a little bit of money. So leave it into a normal account until you've got at least five or ten thousand dollars, whatever your bank's money market is, and uh, then convert that account into a money market account. Uh, even if it's if it's one point five percent, like I said, the BBVA Compass uh, money market account pays one point eight with very very small terms uh, or very small requirements. So you could get close to two percent on your money uh, doing it that way. I can't stress that enough. If if you need it, take it out. Pay your bills, pay your house payment, pay your rent, pay your car payment, whatever you need to do. But if you can leave it in there, leave it in and at the most make 1.5% on your money. That's a great way to let your, your profit compound. It's, it's basically works the same way as compound interest. Uh, at some point, you're making interest on interest that the bank paid you to let them borrow your money. So... There we go. That's, uh, you know, 13 minutes of game changing information that really uh, that really turned the tables on us and, and allowed us to become a little bit more profitable. Uh, it was a great experiment and I don't see us ever changing. So if you if you like, uh, look it up. Profit first system. There are a ton of people, a ton of, uh, you know, YouTube uh Tony Robbins type characters that talk about it that are also trying to sell you a system of some sort. Don't get sucked down the rabbit hole of the marketing. Uh, just take the theory of the system, put it to work for you. Don't let it cost you any money, but I do suggest using that profit account and making it money market at the minimum uh, index or mutual fund at the maximum and let that profit work for you, especially if you don't need it on a daily basis to pay house payments, utility bills, et cetera, et cetera. So there we go. Profit first. Look into money markets, look into profit, uh, I'm not, I'm sorry, uh, index funds, mutual funds, and see how you can let that money work for you. And then even if it's just for the year. Leave it in. What we do is we leave it in for the year. We build it up all year. And then in December, we uh, we basically get our profit out and start over. We leave a little cash in the account, you know, to get us through the slow season. But we leave that in all year to make interest and uh, 
and just make us a little more money off the little bit of money we've already made. So I hope you can use it. Foodtruckhelp.com. Visit the website. Uh, subscribe with your email address. Uh, you can also subscribe on Apple. You can subscribe on uh, all of the big podcast aggregators. Uh, YouTube is up now as well. Uh, Food Truck Help. Uh, there's links to everything on foodtruckhelp.com, and you can join the Facebook group, the Food Truck Help Facebook group. I uh, started that for discussion, uh, kind of like all the other uh, Facebook food truck groups, but uh, I basically wanted to start that for the people that are enjoying the podcast and can have discussions on some of the things I talk about, and I will try my best to answer. <clears throat> I've got a call coming up uh, after Christmas here with a guy uh, named Nate who was having a bit of a uh, bit of trouble getting finance for a food truck. So we're going to have a discussion over the phone and see if we can't figure out a way for him to get financing and uh, figure out what the uh, you know what the the things are that are keeping him from getting a loan, a business loan. So uh, that's coming up. If you've got anything you'd like to hear about, please let me know. Uh, feel free to contact me on foodtruckhelp.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. There is a form there to shoot me an email. So anything you need, just let me know and we will go from there. We will see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>